using a vacuum gauge is just one way to determine if you've got a restricted exhaust. Can't get the air out, you can't get the air in. Well, there's other ways to do it. We'll talk about temperature coming up. But one way is to look at the back pressure with a back pressure gauge. Now, on the screen, you see a photograph of a high quality that, uh, exhaust back pressure gauge. Very high temperature rubber hose connected to a special fitting that goes into the hole where you remove the oxygen sensor and the exhaust pipe or the exhaust manifold. Now, necessity is the mother of invention, they say, and uh, a lot of techs do whatever it takes to sometimes make their own tools, especially if price is a big factor. Uh, my master tech buddy, Dwayne McCarty, has taken uh, use of an old, worn out O2 sensor, simply grind it down, cut it off on the inside until you have the hollow part of the porcelain shell. It's hollowed out and you have this fitting right here. In fact, there is what he's did with an old O2 sensor. So it's hollow, there's the threads. He's taken a spark plug wire boot and shoved it over. That sensor made a good seal and put a fitting into the, the spark plug wire boot. It's all nice and sealed up. It goes to the same gauge I was using earlier for checking vacuum. That particular style gauge that Duane also uses is the type that reads not only vacuum as we go counterclockwise, but reads a little bit of pressure up to 10 PSI as we go clockwise. So a use for an old gauge, a use for an old O2 sensor. Simply unscrew the, uh, the O2 sensor pre-catalytic converter and thread this unit in its place and you look for those numbers, one or two PSI typically add idle, no more, and then no more than four or five PSI or so. Check the book, we'll give you the exact specs after you get to about 2,500 RPMs. Those questions on what you should have at those two different speeds as far as pounds per square inch of back pressure with a back pressure gauge will guarantee be on the ASEA 8 test.